Okay, uh, welcome back. This is question number eight from summer 2016, paper four, variant one. And we have a question here all about functions. And this is a topic which did not come up in the paper two for June 2018. And we're a couple of days before the paper four. So I'm kind of guessing that this is very highly likely to come up something about functions. So I've chosen a question from one of the recent years about functions. And uh, we're going to try to answer this question now. And just to go through this particular topic. OK, so now uh, we are told there's three functions. f of x equals 2x plus 1 g of x equals x squared plus 4, and h of x equals 2x. Okay, these three functions that we've been given, and we have to do the following. First of all, it says solve the function f of x equals g1. f of x equals So f of x equals g1. So what does this mean? It means we have to make an equation. Okay, we take the function f of x, which is 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1, that's f of x. We make it equal to g1. That means you take the function g and you replace the x with whatever's in the bracket. So here it says g1. So we're going to take 1 and replace the x with 1. A function is basically an instruction. So whatever goes in here has to go through this function for g. You have to take whatever's in the bracket. You have to do this to it. You have to square it and then add 4 to it. So here what we're going to do is we're going to take the 1 and we've got to square the 1 and add 4 to it. So you've got this equation. You've got 2x plus 1. Now 1 squared is 1 and 1 plus 4 is 5. Then we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. So 2x equals 5 minus 1, which is 4. And therefore x equals 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So x equals 2. Okay, that's the answer to 8a. 8b, find fh3. Now, what does this mean? This means you've got to find what h3 is, okay, and then you've got to put that inside function f. So whatever is mentioned second is done first, and put, and the result of that is put into the function before it. So fh3 means you find what h3 is, and then you put that inside function f. So h3, h is this here, 2 to the power of x. So we've got to, so we've got to take the 2 to the power of x, and we've got to replace the x with 3. Okay, h3 means put 3 instead of the x in function h. So you're going to have 2 to the power of 3. Okay, that means 8. 2 cubed is 8. That means we've got to take 8 and replace the x in function f by 8. So instead of having 2 times x plus 1, we'll have 2 times 8 plus 1. The 8 took the place of the x in this function. That gives you 16 plus 1 which is 17. So that's the answer for part B, F, H, 3. Okay, number C, part C says find the inverse of function F. Okay, in the function F, I'll put everything here so we can see what's going on. Function F is 2x plus 1. So we're going to find the inverse. Now, the inverse can be thought of in, in a couple of different ways. I'll show you first the standard way. You say, okay, first of all, you write down the function that you got. So you, got, you start off with F of X, equals 2x plus 1. Our aim is to find the inverse of f of x. First of all, you write y equals 2x plus 1. So you just replace f of x with y. Second, you swap the x and y around. I would call this the y. Wherever you see y, you call it x. Wherever you see x, you call it y. And then thirdly, you make y the subject of the formula. So you're going to subtract 1 from both sides. So you have x minus 1 equals 2y. And divide both sides by 2, so you end up with x minus 1 over 2 equals y. So that is the function of fx, uh, inverse function of fx, which is x minus 1 over 2. The other way of doing, of, of thinking about this is by using flow charts. So, okay, we start off with x, okay, for function f. And what do you do next? One second, let me just start off. Okay, f of x Okay, is as follows. You start off with the function, with the, the, the number, with x. Okay, what do we do to it? Okay, we multiply it by 2. Okay, and you get 2x. Okay, and then we add 1. So we get 
2x plus 1. That's your function f of x. Now, to find the inverse function, we always start backwards. So we start from here, we go this way, and we do the reverse. So instead of adding 1, I'm going to subtract 1. So you have x minus 1. And then instead of multiplying by 2, I'm going to do the reverse, the inverse, which is divide by 2. So I'm going to put x minus 1 over 2, and that is our inverse function. x minus 1 over 2. Okay, so there's one way you can do it by rearranging. First of all, you write it as y equals, you swap the x and y, then you make y the subject, and whatever you get, that form, is the inverse function. Okay, when you find an inverse, you're basically swapping the x and y around. That's what you're doing. Okay, so that's um, part C. Now, part D says, find g f of x in its simplest form. So you've got to put this function, f of x, into g. So you've got to basically do this. You've got to put f of x into g, so you've got to replace the x by 2x plus 1 in function g. So instead of x, I'm going to write 2x plus 1 squared plus 4. Now, please don't make the mistake of making this 4x squared plus 1. Now, this means 2x times 2x. 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. That's what it means. So if you multiply that out, you're going to get 4x squared plus 2x plus another 2x plus 1. So you'll end up with 4x squared plus 2x plus 2x, which is plus 8x plus 1. And then you've got your plus 4 at the end. So you end up with 4x squared okay, plus 8x plus 5. And there we have our answer for part D. Okay, then I'll go to the next page and finish off the question. It says, solve the equation, the inverse of hx equals 0 0.5. Now, hx is equal to this. You have y equals 2 to the power of x. Now, there would, have, there would be two ways of doing this if we knew how to find the inverse of this function. However, we do not know how to find the inverse of this function. If I say x equals 2 to the power of y, in order to make this y the subject, we need to have some further knowledge of mathematics, which you will not learn this particular thing in IGCSE. If you have learned it and you do know it, that will be an acceptable answer. However, you're not required to know that. Okay, so there's actually another way that they expect you to do the answer in, which is as follows. And this is very important. Okay, so please pay attention to this because you may get a question like this, which we don't know how to solve except in this particular way. Okay, this way that I'm going to t t tell you sometimes you can do it by making the inverse and you know you won't you know you don't need to use the way that I mentioned but the way that I mentioned it is going to make life a lot quicker and easier for you if you understand it. So first of all what I do is when I see something like this so okay what would it what would it be if there was no inverse? If there was no inverse it would be h of x equals 0 0.5. And what would that mean? That would mean I replace the h of x with 0 0.5. So if, if I had this, it would become, I'll basically say 2 to the power of x equals 0 0.5. This is like y equals 2 to the power of x. So you, it's like you're replacing the y with 0 0.5. Okay, but as it says inverse of um, h equals 0 0.5, now what I'm going to do is instead of making the y into 0 0.5, and because it says inverse, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to make the x into 0 0.5. So it's going to be 2 to the power of 0 0.5, and that will be the value of, or the, you could say the, sol the solution to this equation. Okay, 2 to the power of 0 0.5 means 2 to the power of a half, which means the square root of 2. Now the square root of 2 is about 1.4 something, okay? It's 1.4 something. Oh, I've still got some time left. So you got from the calculator, make it a bit bigger. All right. So 2 to the power of 0 0.5. I'll show you how to do it this way in case you're not sure. This is 2 to the power of 0 0.5. You could do that and that would work. That's 1.41 1 to 3SF. 1.41 1 to 3SF. That's the answer. Okay. All right, so that's but if you that's when if you didn't realize that it means the square root two to the power of a half actually means the square root of two. That's what it means, which is one point four one. 
Okay, so here we have the answer for part E, and all we got left now is F. Okay, so 1 over h of x, so it's 1 over 2 to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of k x, and I'll write down the value of k. So if I rewrite this, if I rewrite this, this will be 2 to the power of minus x equals 2 to the power of k x. Okay, now if we compare, if they, these two are equal to each other, all right, then everything is, except, is the same except you've got k here and you've got minus x here. That means k, that means um, these two must be the same. If the bases are the same, the powers must be the same. So I know that minus x must be the same as kx. If I divide both sides by k, x is equal to k is equal to negative 1. So k equals negative 1. That's the value of k for which 1 over h of x equals 2 to the power of kx. And there we have question the question finished, I think it was question number 8, from May, June 2016, variant four, paper 4, variant 1. Okay? Thank you for listening.